So when it comes to COVID-19, without question, uh, the news is looking a lot better, right? Uh, when it comes to daily new cases, that's dropping substantially. Uh, deaths per day also decreasing. This is all phenomenal news. Having said that, though, we have to remain cautiously optimistic for the time being because we're still averaging more than 90,000 new cases per day. If you told us back in March of 2020 that we'd be celebrating 90,000 cases per day, uh, that would be unfathomable because, you know, at that time, we wouldn't have known that it would ever get that bad to the point where we'd be celebrating 90,000 cases per day. But having said that, though, it's decreasing, and that's really good, but it's not over. The light is at the end of the tunnel, but it is not over yet, which is why we still need to make sure that we pay people to stay home because people need to make a living. People have to make money. So you have to shut down the economy, shut down businesses, and pay people to stay home. However, since things are starting to look up, the GOP predictably is already trying to just pretend as if the pandemic is not a thing. Like at this crucial time when we're finally starting to get the virus under control, now they're saying, let's just act like it's over already. They just want the pandemic to last forever. Uh, so I want to show you this graphic that uh, House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy tweeted out. He says the best stimulus plan is to fully reopen our economy. In other words, I don't want to give people another round of survival checks. I just want to reopen the economy, pretend as if the pandemic is over, and, you know, send the peasants off to die, basically. More than half a million Americans have already died because of this pandemic. If we actually did what he said we should do, how much more would die? I mean, what's it going to take to make Republicans like Kevin McCarthy actually take this virus seriously? A million deaths? Two million deaths? They just, they don't seem to care. And he's making this dangerous recommendation at a time when the CDC is warning that the UK strain, which is highly contagious, could become dominant by March. So no, we shouldn't be reopening the economy. Now that we're finally starting to get a grip on cases, get it under control, contain the virus, now is the not the time to let our foot off the gas. Like that's... That's idiotic. I don't know how else to describe it. Like, I'm trying to become more charitable in the way that I talk about these things, but this is just fucking idiocy. Uh, having said that, though, you know, this is going to be the dominant narrative now. There's going to be more pressure by ghouls to reopen the economy, not just Republicans, but Democrats as well, because these are capitalists who care more about profits than they do about the health and well-being of people. Um, now, I want to point you to a segment that uh, aired on Fox News with Stuart Varney. He talked to a guy wearing a cow suit for whatever reason and this might be the dumbest segment i've seen when it comes to covid19 the things that he says as to why he's opposed to the lockdown it's going to make your head explode so now we can't fly from state to state without a vaccination card but we can vote without an id card don't you think I, it's it's hap we're getting played to such a massive level here and americans are like frogs in warm water they're turning up the heat and we're not jumping out. Yeah. We got to call we, we got to call an, an end to it all and stand up for ourselves because we've given away all of our rights in the name of safety. Un unlock for heaven's sake. S stop these res th these these restrictions on our everyday lives, on our freedom. Can we put up that graphic again showing the number of the new cases way down to more than four? There you go. 41% decline in new cases in a 14-day change, 22% decline in new deaths. If ever there was a time for a brave politician to stand up and say, come on, boys, unlock, get on with it, now's the time, isn't it, Scott? Stuart, 100% correct. We don't have the money. We're bankrupting my great-great-grandchildren as we speak. We just don't have the money. So open up. That's the problem. And again... The, our, our elites are telling us to wear a second and maybe a third mask. At the same time, we've got 12 states that are lifting their mask mandates. The utter hypocrisy is now verging on total garbage, and America just doesn't like getting played. They'll trust the people that are our leaders until a point where they can see that this just isn't working out. You need to have, to have a vaccine ID maybe to fly from state to state, but you don't need one to vote. Or Gavin Newsom going to go over all of those signatures because they're calling for his head. But when it came to the voting for the absentee ballots, they don't care about if there's a signature or not. I mean, this has gotten to such a point here where if you have to stand up or they're just going to take everything away. I, 
and I'm not, I don't have a tinfoil hat on, right? I'm not a crazy person. No, you're not. But no. this is leading down a road that I don't want to go. We I'm started with, with 15 days to stop the spread, and it's turned into stay at home until you accept communism. <laughs> That's an excellent out cue, Scott. <laughs> That's a really good one. That will live forever on videotape. We're going to replay that forever. Yeah, you're all right, Scott. Calm down. All right. Relax, lad. We're going to be all right. I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> What a dumb fuck. Okay, first of all, you look ridiculous. I don't get the shtick. Like, I don't know why you are wearing a cow suit. But nonetheless, I mean, if you want people to take you seriously, don't wear a cow suit. Second of all, you sound as ridiculous as you look. Now, I get that he was trying to be like half serious there. But he literally said that the goal is to get us to stay at home until we accept communism. So you're suggesting that Joe Biden, a capitalist, is actually a communist? How do you even respond to this level of stupidity? How do you address this in a good faith manner? Because this isn't a serious argument. Like, in order to actually respond to this substantively, you'd have to assume that it's in good faith and serious. But this isn't serious. Like, this is idiocy. The goal of the government is to get us to stay home so we become accustomed to communism. Do you know what communism is? Do you even know what capitalism is? I mean, to use these terms in such an incorrect way, such an idiotic way, is just batshit fucking insane. Like, it speaks to the depravity and idiocy of the right. Wow. Uh, so he tries to make this equivalence between needing to be vaccinated in order to fly and uh, voting without an ID. He says we can't fly from state to state without a vaccination card, but we can vote without an ID card. First of all, that's not mandatory, but it should be. You should be forced to prove that you've been vaccinated in order to fly if we ever actually want to reopen and get the virus under control. Second of all, these things are very different. Having an ID shouldn't determine whether or not you're able to exercise your right to vote. However, when it comes to flying, if you're not vaccinated, if you're not careful, you can endanger the lives of other folks. So this is obviously a false equivalence. But he thought that this point was so good that he made it twice. What a fucking idiot. And then Stuart Varney decided to chime in and he said, Stop these restrictions on our everyday lives, on our freedom. Your freedom hasn't been restricted, Karen. The lockdowns are necessary. They're depressing. They're inconvenient, albeit they're necessary. Because we have to stay inside to save lives. Like, is there an area in the Constitution that says that we should be allowed to spread our germs at indoor restaurants? I just, I don't understand why they expect us to take them seriously when they're conflating their inability to dine indoors with like them losing their liberty is it that big of a deal to you like can't you just do takeout i just i don't understand like these people are so selfish that they just don't care about others you know what i want to be able to dine indoors and go to a movie theater so um fuck it let's just pretend like the pandemic isn't a thing and if people die people die I'm bored. I just... It's depressing to see this, and it's tiring, quite frankly, because we've been dealing with this since the beginning of the pandemic, when, you know, the uh, lieutenant governor of Texas was, I think, one of the first who claimed that we should sacrifice grandma to the gods of capitalism and just pretend like the pandemic isn't a thing. And we've seen what happens if we don't take it seriously. We've seen that even when we take it somewhat seriously, hundreds of thousands of people die so again i want to ask the question how many more deaths will it take to get these ghouls to actually take this virus fucking seriously now the cow guy said this and um it's interesting because he says this and it really speaks to the moral depravity moral bankruptcy of capitalism he says we just don't have the money we're bankrupting my great great grandchildren as we speak, he just gave away the game there. He's inadvertently saying that he knows that reopening the economy is going to kill people, but it's all about money to him. 
people's health and well-being, that is less important than my great-great-grandchildren going into debt, which it doesn't even work that way, so shut the fuck up. But I mean, this is conservatism in a nutshell. The lives of human beings isn't as important as capital in this country. I mean, this pandemic has truly showed that capitalism is a ruthless, morally bankrupt ideology. And anyone who adheres to it very deliberately prioritizes money over the lives of human beings. Now, maybe they'd feel differently if they lost a loved one to COVID-19 or suffered from it themselves. But either way, this is just disgusting. But I mean, of course, this is Fox News. So it's what we've come to expect. We shouldn't take them seriously, and we definitely shouldn't take them seriously when they bring on people who dress up as cows and expect us to take them seriously when they talk about very serious issues related to the economy and death. I'm so tired of this bullshit. Beta male.